All right, guys, welcome to this episode. And in this one, I'm going to explain who I believe you should hire first in your business. Now, one of the common excuses I hear from business owners is that they haven't got the time or the money to do the things they want to in business. Now, this excuse typically comes from those who are operating as a one man band or a one woman band. They're a solopreneur and they're kind of bottlenecking their own growth, right? And they say, as I mentioned, I've got the time or money to do the things they want to do in business. And when you start asking questions and start looking under the hood of why that is, it's quite easy to find the problem. And the problem is they are spending their time on non-income generating activities. They are responding to emails. They are doing admin. They are quoting. They are uh, uploading things onto social media. They are literally doing things that are not really a high priority in their business, right? Which sometimes they think is a high priority. And instead of, you know, putting their time into making more money, more revenue, they are literally wasting their time doing those kind of things. Now, one of the first hires to kind of solve this problem is to hire for a virtual assistant, okay, a VA. You can find a, a quality VA on Upwork.com or Fire, Fiverr.com or PeoplePerHour.com or through recommendation. And you want to delegate those things straight away, okay? You should not, you know, be responding to emails that don't require you to do so. You don't need to, you know, do admin tasks, invoicing or uh, file management. Things like that really are going to chip away at your goals, right? If you are, if you've got big lofty goals for your business. Um, so once you kind of hire for a VA, you can then focus on those income generating activities, which come in the form of marketing and sales, okay? With regards to uh, who you should hire for next, this is kind of, uh, you know, this advice kind of uh, is a bit misty because uh, people have different theories on this. So I'm going to share with you mine. And my honest opinion is that you should hire for your weakness next. Okay. So if you're, um, you know, if you're great at sales, but you are rubbish in operations, then you might want to hire for operations because it makes no sense of having more weaknesses in your businesses than you should, right? You want to kind of more strengths and less weaknesses. So for me, you know, I'm not very good operationally. So I would literally delegate that thing straight away to someone who is better at doing that role than me. So I can focus on my strengths in my business. Now, Sometimes when I kind of uh, speak to some people who are in business or uh, our own clients, uh, a lot of people kind of want to delegate the sales process straight away, okay? And I'm going to give you my thoughts on that before you end up delegating that. Um, the reason why a lot of people want to delegate sales in the first place is because they get cringy around sales. They like don't like the thought of asking people for business or money or, you know, they don't like rejection maybe. I don't know but they want to get rid of that without developing that skill set first. And I'm going to share with you why that is a big mistake. If you start delegating for sales first and you've not developed that skill set first, then unfortunately you're bringing someone in who could be great at sales, but if they were to leave for whatever reason, they were to uh, get pregnant, they were to get headhunted, they were to go on a traveling backpack around Bali, right? I don't know. If they were to leave, well, the sales are going to dip because you haven't picked up the sales, right? And I believe you should be the best salesperson in your business or one of at least uh, as the owner and uh, founder of your business, all right? So I think before you delegate that, please develop the sales skill set first. And also, you know, if you bring on someone who is wanting to sell your product or service and you're high for that, well, how can you expect to train them to sell the right way? Because if they're not selling the right way, well, that could damage your reputation, right? And unfortunately, you're going to lose a lot of money and time waffling along trying to train someone when you don't really know what you're talking about yet. So my recommendation first is to hire uh, for sales when you've nailed that skill set you first. So just to do a bit of a recap, um, I believe you should hire for a virtual assistant first. Delegate all the admin in your life, right? I don't do any admin. I try and avoid that those things ASAP. 
um, you know, whether that's invoicing or sending out emails or setting up meetings or PowerPoint presentations. I don't do any of that. I de get rid of it, okay? I pay someone to do a better job than me at those tasks so I can focus on other priorities. The next thing I should um, that I recommend you um, hire for next is for your weakness. So you've nailed your admin, the admin sorted, your next kind of um, hire should be for your weakness. So if you are rubbish at operations, then uh, hire for operations because that's gonna allow you to have more strengths in your business. So you can all work towards your strengths. Now there is a caveat, as I mentioned, which is the third step is you must develop the sales skill set first before hiring for that. And the kind of principle of behind that is to kind of minimize risk. So if a salesperson is amazing and they leave, then you can pick up the slack if they leave. And also you can train them the correct way. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. That's my thoughts on who you should hire first. And if you have liked this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and I'll see you in the next one.